Well, hot damn, someone new. Without question, the game Fallout 3 is enormous, with countless options, directions, and methods of gameplay. However, for most people, being dropped into a game world sized roughly at 16 square miles with little more than a vague idea of what to do and where to go can be rather intimidating. So naturally, it's easy to feel overwhelmed and not know what to do. For anyone new to Fallout 3, I have a few personal startup methods that I frequently use whenever I decide to go back to square one and escape the vault for a journey into the wastes, all over again. When you set foot outside of Vault 101, the first thing you want to do is check the mail drop box at the entrance of Springvale. Inside, you'll find some useful loot that will help you start your life in the wastes. Next, you want to head to Megaton, not too far away. But before you go inside, go around to the back of the town walls. Here you'll find a lot of rocks, but look for the one with three sticks surrounding it. This rock is hollowed out, and inside are some additional things that can help you in your travels. After searching the loot cache, head into Megaton and up to Crater Site Supply. Strike up a conversation with Moira, the shop owner, and she'll ask you about having lived in a vault. I'm working on a book about the wasteland. It'd be great to have the foreword by a vault dweller. Help me out, would you? Don't tell her off. Instead, give her your two cents on living underground. Regardless of what you have to say about living life in a large subterranean box, she'll give you the armored vault suit behind her as a token of gratitude. I think you're gonna like it out here. And here's the armored suit, just to make sure you don't get recycled into something else's food. With a decent hunk of armor in your possession, you next want to go ahead and sell off all of the useless junk you picked up while escaping the vault. Now, if you followed another video of mine called Perfect Character Guide and put your intelligence to nine points before leaving the vault, the next thing you'll want to do is travel to Rivet City and grab the intelligence bobblehead. If you don't know how to get to Rivet City, it's an old rusted out aircraft carrier in the bottom right corner of the world map. The easiest route to get there is to leave Megaton and travel directly east, jump into the river whenever you reach it, swim all the way south around the Jefferson Memorial, get back on land and head east to the boat. Also, to get into Rivet City, all you need to do is activate the intercom. Welcome to Rivet City. Please wait while the bridge extends. Whether or not you go to Rivet City, the next objective is to secure a safe house. This is where you have to start making your own choices. There are only two safe houses available in the game, and you can only own one. Those two places are a shack in Megaton and a suite in Tenpenny Tower. To get the shack, you need to disarm the bomb in the middle of Megaton. Access to the suite, however, is granted after you rig the bomb and wipe Megaton off of the face of the Earth. If you choose to blow up Megaton, then there are a few things you should definitely do before rigging the bomb. First, you should talk to Moira at Crater Side Supply and start the Wasteland Survival Guide. By doing this, even after you destroy the town, she'll survive as a ghoul and you can still continue the quest chain after she relocates to Underworld in the middle of the DC ruins. The second thing you want to do is get inside of Lucas Sims' house to grab the Strength Bobblehead. If you can't pick the lock on his front door, you'll have to wait around until he's inside eating. Just wait right in front of his door one hour at a time until you can just walk in. Once you've done those two things, you can proceed to rig up the atomic bomb in the middle of town, which requires a level 25 explosive skill, and then head to Tenpenny Tower to watch the fireworks. If you choose to save Megaton, all you need is a level 25 explosive skill, and you can walk right up to the bomb and defuse it. Afterwards, you can talk to Lucas Sims to receive the key to the shack. Here's your reward. Hell. Why don't you move in? Could use someone like you. Got an empty place here you can use. Here's the key indeed. Or Harden Sims, Lucas's son, 
if for some reason Lucas ends up dead. I know, I know. Something I should mention is that you also get paid in caps for deciding the fate of Megaton. You can also increase how much you receive if you pass a speech check with Mr. Burke before blowing up the town. We'll play. An extra 500 caps. Or Lucas Sims for saving the settlement. That's pretty steep. Oh, fine. Uh, do it and you'll get your money. Just keep in mind that you have to talk to them before you do the deed to potentially increase your payout. Choosing whether or not to blow up Megaton, however, is a big choice. So for those of you who can't choose which to do, my personal advice is to save the town rather than destroy it. The reason being that there are just more detailed benefits to keeping the rust pile around. You've made a grievous error in judgment. Watch your back! Those are all of the things that, in my personal opinion, are more or less mandatory to setting yourself up for an easier ride in Fallout 3. Once you have the armored vault suit, the sparse items from the two loot caches, and a safe house to dump your things in, you can choose your path of true action. Personally though, there are four different things I prefer to do when I reach this point in the game. The first, and my favorite method, is heading to the pit. For those of you who don't know, the pit can only be accessed if you have a Game of the Year edition, or the Pit DLC. The primary reason that I like to head to the Pit so early in the game is because of how the content plays by its own rules. The Pit is a self-contained experience, and as soon as you arrive, you are stripped of all your belongings and can't leave. So it doesn't matter if you have good gear going in. Second is that by playing your cards right, you can get your hands on some great items. The plan works fairly simple, though getting to the Pit can be a bit of a struggle, as you'll have to cross more than half the map, which can be easy, but is usually no simple task at such a low level. Anyways, following the quest prompts for Into the Pit, you'll eventually be at a train tunnel that will take you to the remnants of the city Pittsburgh. Once you reach this point, after acquiring a slave outfit, you want to fast travel back to your safe house. Dump everything you have, except for your ammo, slave outfit, and a small sidearm. Then return to the train tunnel and head to the pit. Once you arrive, you'll have a shootout with some raiders and then have to cross a bridge covered with mines. Once you're inside of the city, though, you'll quickly find yourself running through the scrapyard looking for steel ingots. When you're in the steel yard, you should try to find a total of 50 ingots for a powerful multi-beam laser rifle, or 90 ingots for a one-of-a-kind silenced assault rifle. Regardless of how many ingots you collect, you're best off gathering at least 50 so you can grab the laser rifle. The reason you want to have it is so you'll have a substantially easier time when you fight in the hole. Anyway, as long as you follow the linear quest in the pit to the end, regardless of which faction you choose to side with, you'll gain access to a very valuable piece of machinery. Upon completion of the pit's main quest, you'll finally be allowed to operate a machine inside of the foundry. That machine is the ammunition press. Why is this machine so valuable? Because it allows you to repurpose any ammunition for use in different guns. Here's an example. I have a ton of 10mm ammunition in my inventory, but I need 44 ammo for my Magnum revolver. With the ammo press, I can easily solve this problem. I'll just open up this bin here, put these bullets inside. While I'm at it, I'll drop in these other bullets and shells I'm not really using. Now I'll just pop over to the computer and choose 44 ammo from the list and confirm the action. Now, if I check the bin again, voila! I now have plenty of ammo for my Magnum. The ammo press can make the game much easier in the beginning. While you can find plenty of bullets, you probably won't find enough for the specific gun you want to use. By utilizing the ammo press, you can quickly remedy this problem. However, I want to reinforce the fact that the ammo press will only repurpose bullets. This means that batteries for energy weapons, mini-nukes, missiles, mines, and grenades don't work and cannot be repurposed. Additionally, I want to stress that the ammo press is accessible only AFTER you finish the pit's main quest. Now, the plan of going to the pit is all good and well, but what if you don't have a Game of the Year edition or the DLC pit content installed? Well, there are three other options available that I like to use whenever starting a game. The first of them, and most easy to do, would be to simply follow the Wasteland Survival Guide quest chain from Moira Brown, who owns Craterside Supply in Megaton. Well, it's a dangerous place out there in the wastes, right? People could really use a compilation of good advice. 
like a wasteland survival guide. The tasks that Moira Brown gives you, for the most part, have you running the gauntlet and experiencing the gamut of what you can expect out of the wasteland. In turn, it also suggests an array of options of how you can tackle what's thrown at you. The second option, if you can't go to the pit that is, is collecting bobbleheads. There are two kinds of bobbleheads, seven that will raise a specific special attribute, and thirteen that will add ten points to a specific skill set. There's a bit of a debate on the collection of bobbleheads though. Without getting complicated or explaining too much, if you have a Game of the Year edition or the Broken Steel DLC, just grab the skill bobbleheads. Anyways, for more information on where all the bobbleheads are, watch my two-part bobblehead guide. Now, the third and final option I can advise to you, if you can't go to the pit, is to collect one or two of the easier-to-grab special guns in the game. Finding these weapons tends to coincide with finding bobbleheads, so doing both would be a great way to kill two birds with one stone. As for what those weapons are and where they are located, check my beginner's weapon guide for full in-depth information. Even though there's no strict way to play Fallout 3, where to go and what to do, these techniques are quite useful if you ever find yourself astray and at a loss for what action is best to take. Though they are my advice for when you start, it doesn't stop these methods from being just as useful later on in the game. It saddens me to think how quickly we resort to violence.